All right, uh, we'll get started. And as discussed in the email that I sent, today we will just try to finish and discuss any remaining questions you might have um, about that gamma gamma Poisson exercise. I know we only did it halfway through. I posted the solution on Udo for those of you uh, who wanted to look at earlier, um, but then of course in class today, we can uh, spend a little bit more time uh, working on this. And um, so if you remember, so let's refresh our memory a little bit of what we're doing. Um, we are trying to derive a game sampler that is uh, setting up uh, the model, the joint likelihood, the joint prior, and then you're able to get the joint uh, posterior. So if you remember what we're doing, we have a model like this, okay? We have all of our observations, y1 through yn, follows a Poisson with uh, parameter lambda in equation three. And furthermore, uh, we have two parameters in this model, uh, lambda itself, which follows a gamma in equation four uh, with one and B, and B is another parameter which follows its own gamma prior, which is gamma one one. Okay? So uh, what we did um, last week is to uh, follow the step one by one to figure out eventually, eventually how we can actually derive um, the full conditional posterior distribution for the two parameters um, in this model. So if you remember what we did, the joint likelihood is lambda, oops, okay, lambda, uh, lambda B, okay? And we know that it should be the product from one to N observation, right? And each of them is following your Poisson. So we need to uh, follow the Poisson likelihood. Let me just go up really quick to make sure that I don't forget. So it's gonna be lambda to the power of y, okay. So this is gonna be a product of lambda to the power of y i. And then we have um, exp to the negative lambda and then divided by y i factorial. And once we did the producting, we have lambda to the power of sum of y exp to the negative n lambda. And then down here, we have the product of all of the yi factorial, okay? So that's in the um, denominator, okay? Uh, the joint likelihood function, uh, sorry, the joint prior distribution is quite special in this case. So when we have our lambda and b, okay? So if you look at equation four and five, what we're given is that Lambda given B follows a gamma, okay? And B itself follows another gamma. So the way that is given to us is actually a marginal and then a conditional. Okay? So as we know, if I want to know the joint of lambda and B, if I have the marginal of B, and I also have the conditional of lambda given B, the joint will be the product of this two. Okay, so that's from your probability course before. So this will be the product of the prior for B multiplies that of the conditional prior of lambda given B. Okay? Now, all we need to do is to follow equation two that's given to you. That's the um, gamma uh, density function. So for B, what do we have? B follows a gamma one one. So we have one to the power of one, gamma one, and then b to the power of one minus one, which goes away because b to the power of zero is gonna be one. And then the exp to uh, negative b. Okay? Okay, yeah. So that's the, con uh, that's the marginal part. The conditional part, as we know, uh, lambda given b follows another gamma, which has one and b as the parameter. So we're gonna have b to the power of one, gamma one, okay? And then here, the lambda is the unknown. So lambda to the power of one minus one, where A is one. And then the exp to the negative um, B times lambda. Okay? So you get the joint prior, right? That's what we did last time. And then lastly, um, in order to get the joint posterior, we're gonna have this proportional to the product of the prior, joint prior times the joint likelihood. Okay. 
So since we start to use the proportional sign, we can drop a lot of constants. Um, so let me use a different color to take all of the constants. So everything about the yi is a constant, so you don't need to worry about it. Okay. And um, all of those are constant. Those are constant as well. This b to the power of zero is a constant as one, so you need, don't need to worry about that either. So with all that, you're going to have um, lambda. So from the prior, I have exp negative b. And oh, I should say, oh, OK, let me, let me keep it over there. Uh, lambda to the power of 1 minus 1, even though it's going to be 1 eventually. Uh, but it will be useful because later on, um, we might still need that. And then from the likelihood, we get lambda to the power of sum of y, and then exp to the negative and lambda. So with all that, what do we have? We have, um, I guess, lambda to the power of 1 plus sum of yi minus 1. Okay? And then in the exp, you're going to get negative, uh, depending on how you want to write it, but we can just write everything in one term for now. And then we can go to the next step. Make sense? Same as before. Okay, same as last time. Okay. All right. So keep this uh, in your note because the next page of this exercise says, okay, now I have the joint posterior and I need to derive what we call the full conditional posterior. So remember, we might not know how to sample directly of the joint lambda and b. But if I can get the full conditional posterior of lambda given everything, including B and all of the data, and I can also get that for B given everything, including lambda and the data, then I can iteratively start sampling the joint posterior distribution. So the task for you is from this joint posterior, can you recognize what the full conditional posterior distribution is for lambda and then for B? And if you can, we can start iteratively sampling things. Okay, so that's the uh, exercise we didn't get to do um, last Friday. Um, so we're gonna resume from here. So everybody agrees with what I write in the box, the posterior, or if there is any question. Yeah, Sarah? Um, for like step two, why can you sample the two to the one? Oh yeah, uh, oh, ah, okay. Great catch. So I think I should have that B. So sorry about that. Oh, okay, I can do that, I guess. Okay, great catch. So B, oops, oops, sorry. Oops, okay. give me a second. Yeah, so the question is I should not, or the comment is I should not cancel out that B. Um, so I can cancel, I think, the denominator, okay? But the b to the power of one should still uh, be somewhere. So thank you. So let me, uh, I guess, add it. I will just add it uh, here. Okay, so I should have a b over here. Okay, and then I should also have a b here. Okay. Any other mistakes I might have made, or it looks fine to you? Okay. Um, yeah. So for the rest, uh, let's spend a few more minutes first to let you derive the full conditional posterior. So like I said, when you're trying to derive the full conditional for lambda, you should treat everything else as constant. When you try to derive the full conditional for B, you should treat everything else as constant. Treating them as constant, meaning that you don't need to worry about the other terms at all. You should only collect the terms about lambda when you're deriving the full conditional for lambda. And you should only collect the terms about B if you're deriving the full conditional posterior for B. Uh, in this exercise, actually, both full conditional posteriors, you should be able to recognize what they are. Okay? They are one of the known distributions that we have talked about. Um, so take a moment to work on this, and then we're going to look at it together. Uh, once this is done, the rest is uh, Q&A for homework three, lab two, um, as well as anything you have about the midterm exam coming on Friday. Okay? So take a moment. All right, as some of you have worked out, I think um, when I walked around and saw some of your um, work and solutions. Yeah, so both of them eventually going to be a gamma. Okay, both of them are gamma. And let's make sure that we know how to get that. Um, 
step by step and then eventually recognize what it is. Uh, since I want to use what's in this box um, as the joint um, posterior, so I'm just gonna not flip to the next page, but I will erase what's at the top. So I'm just gonna work out the steps for doing the full conditional up here. Okay? So uh, remember for full conditional, um, the first step is of course, write out the joint posterior, which is what we did in the box. And then for full conditional, as we know, it's defined to be one param parameter at a time. And you're assuming that only that is the unknown and everything else is known. Um, so for example, if I'm trying to get the full conditional of lambda, okay, so you can write a horizontal line after this conditional sign to represent that we're looking at everything uh, else as constant, okay? So the joint posterior is what's in this box. And if we're trying to work out the posterior, full conditional posterior for lambda, we should only keep everything about lambda and everything else is not, a, um, not useful or not really necessary when we're doing the derivation. So if I look at what's in the box, I have lambda to the power of something. So I need to keep that, right? Uh, B is a constant because it should go into this uh, conditional sign. So I don't need to worry about that uh, singleton B. In the exponent, we minus b, that's fine, because that's considered as a constant. But we all know also minus b lambda and then minus n lambda. So both of them should be in your form. Okay. All right. So once we do that, what do we have? We have lambda to the sum one plus, I guess, the sum of i minus one. And then in the exponent, I have negative. Uh, so it's everything about lambda. So b plus n times lambda. Make sense? Make sense? Yeah. And now, uh, if we try to recognize what it is, if you look at the general expression for a uh, gamma at the top, you see that for this random parameter lambda, we raise lambda to some power. And then in the exponent is negative something times the lambda. So this gives us a hint that this should be a gamma distribution. And specifically, gamma of. So the first term is a minus one. So our new a is one plus sum of y. Okay. And in the exponent is negative b plus n lambda. So the second term is b plus n. Yes. Why is it a gamma distribution? Mm, so the Poisson, okay. So let me try to go up. So uh, it's, it's gonna be a little bit messy, but if we come up here, if you look at equation one for Poisson, Poisson, if you look at equation one for Poisson, the random variable here is y, okay? So the density is lambda to the power of y, exp to the negative lambda, and then divided by y factorial. So it's different, as you can see, compared to equation two, which is the lambda. So it's super important, I guess, to think about what is random in the particular density that you're looking at. If I look at this gamma, or I should say, if I look at our lambda, uh, this one, let me bring it back over here. Uh -huh. It is lambda, which is the unknown here, lambda to some power, and in the exponent is negative something times lambda. And because of that, we will recognize it as a gamma instead of Poisson, because if it is a Poisson, it has to be um, something to the power of the random variable y. And then in the exponent, actually y is not in there at all. And then you also need to divide y factorial. Make sense? Make sense? Yeah, okay. So this is how we can recognize, oops, this is how we can recognize um, eventually uh, lambda is a gamma full conditional posterior distribution. Okay, make sense? Any other questions? All right, if that makes sense, let's look at B. So when we're looking at B, we only need to care anything in the big bracket um, down here, everything about B. So lambda to some power, we don't need to worry about it because it's a constant, it's known. B itself is one thing. So we have that B here, okay? And then in the exponent, we have a negative B, we have a negative B lambda, both are related B. So we need to keep both. But then the negative n times lambda is irrelevant because it's not about b. So because of that, we're gonna have negative 
lambda plus one times b. Yeah, so you might notice the specific way that I write it. Um, the way that I write it, it would just make it easier for us to recognize what it is eventually. Okay, and this you will uh, gain by doing practicing. So b is again a gamma. Because as we know, even though it's b to the power of one, but it's b to the power of something, okay? And then in the exponent is negative something times b. So the first term is gonna be two because it's one plus one minus one. Okay? And then the second term, just gonna be lambda plus one. So this is a gamma for b and you get a gamma for lambda as well. So now if you want to actually code this scheme sampler, it's gonna be very similar to what we did in class when we we're trying to code um, the scheme sampler for the normal model, right? We have mu with the normal full conditional posterior, phi as a gamma full conditional posterior, and then you iteratively sample like that. Okay, okay, make sense? Yeah, so on Moodle, as you know, um, in addition to the blank exercise, I also posted the solutions, which is what we did in class, uh, but I guess it's neater. Uh, we didn't show you all of the steps, uh, but in class, we talked about how you can um, get, uh, first of all, the joint likelihood, second, the joint prior, and then from all that, you get your step three, so you can get your um, joint posterior. So I would say that's the main first step. Okay? When you're given a model, when you're given the likelihood, uh, or I should say, when you're given the sampling model, when you're given the different priors, um, you should try to write it out as the joint posterior first, following the Bayes rule. And then if you're asked to do the full conditional posterior derivation, then you're gonna recognize one by one, okay? The task or the hint to do that is whenever you're working with one parameter, you're gonna assume that all of the others are constant or as known. So you're gonna look at one at a time. So if you want to get more practice, I say this is a good one. Uh, if you don't look at the solution and if you're able to do it, I think this is uh, good. And then of course, the stuff that we did in class about the normal and um, both mu and phi is unknown. That's another great example of writing out the joint likelihood, writing out the joint prior. From that, you're able to get the joint uh, posterior. And then from that, you will get the full conditional posterior one by one. So I think those are the um, two good main, um, main good examples that you can work with. Uh, if you want to get more practice, like I said, you don't need to work with super complicated models. Um, as long as you know what the data model is, as, you, as, as long as you know what the uh, priors are, you should be able to get the joint posterior. And from there, you can get the full conditional posterior one by one. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, so like both materials are posted on Moodle, the blank one, as well as the um, solutions. And of course, the step five, if you ever um, using um, R, you can code it up. Uh, if you know the data, if you know your initial values and all that, remember we wrote a function to run the Gibbs for the normal example, and you can write a function for many other examples as well. This is doable uh, if you want to give it a try. Okay, all right, um, I'm gonna. Stop recording.